Hello, Ray Wheatley for five years. I'm here with two-time world champion, a lot more than I do, in his office uh, at Rockdale, where he's currently one of uh, Sydney's leading lawyers. How are you, Lubbo? Ray, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Good on you, Lubbo. You look, uh, look very well, mate, in your new office down at Rockdale. Yeah, you're uh, a lawyer down here. You've got several lawyers working for you, is that correct? That's correct, Ray. Very good, mate. Uh, mate, I want to go back when you were working as a sparring partner for uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. That's back in 2007. That's the same year you won the IBF like all the way title. Yes, right. Uh, and you lost that title a few months later in America, right, to Paul, Mal Paul Malinagi. Yep. Now, you got a call from Floyd, the Floyd Mayweather camp to, uh, to work as a sparring partner, what, later that year for the Ricky Hatton fight. He was preparing for Ricky Hatton. That's true. That's true, okay, mate. So, how long were you working with uh, Mayweather for, uh, for that fight? Look, I was there for almost four months. Um, I was also preparing for uh, a possible rematch with Mayweather, I mean, with uh, Manny Naji. Um, but uh, that did happen straight away. Um, I was hoping to fight on the undercard of Mayweather and uh, Ricky Hatton. Um, but I ended up um, having to fight uh, someone else, um, you know, a month after um, uh, Heron and um, Mayweather, uh, after the May Mayweather, Mayweather and Hatton fight. Okay. But uh, look, it was a great uh, opportunity for me to work uh, with Pound for Pound, the best fighter in the world. Uh, it's just a, it was a great experience. Um, and I think it was the best uh, training camp I've ever been in. Um, and I got to, you know, see what Mayweather, what makes Mayweather, you know, what he is today, what makes him the best. Now, you, he had unusual training hours, is that right? He trains a bit unusual as compared to, you know, uh, to other fighters, uh, you know. He's, um, he's, he's more like an, a night owl, you know. Mayweather mm. is active at night and during the day he sleeps, um, you know, and he, and you can understand living in, in Las Vegas, you know, people are active at night. Yeah, um, yeah. But Mayweather, you know, it, 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 it's not unusual for Mayweather to give you a call in the middle of the night and say, you know, everybody at the gym, let's go for sparring. That's so you were prepared for it? Well, for me, it worked out better for me because, uh, you know, with the time difference, I'm used to the Australian time, you know. Uh, yeah. So night time over there, it's usually daytime for me in Australia. Yeah. So it worked out perfect for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he, the guy trains you know, um, a little bit different compared to other fighters. Even in sparring sessions, you know, you have a, sometimes you have a round that goes for nine minutes straight, 12 minutes straight, you know. I enjoyed it though. So, um, was it, so other sparring partners were there as well? He, he always has a lot of sparring partners for, uh, for fights, but I was, for that fight, I was uh, the main sparring partner. Yeah. Um, and some sparring partners didn't last long, you know, they came and go, you know, he would knock them out and then they get sent back home. Mm. Um, that's just Mayweather. And what did you think of his power in that sparring? Look, Mayweather is not a powerful puncher, but, uh, you know, he, he throws a lot of punches. Uh, he's the kind of guy that if he knocks people out, it's uh, because of an accumulation of punches and uh, his speed. You know, always remember uh, in boxing, um, the punch that usually knocks you out is the punch you don't see. It doesn't have to be a big, powerful punch. Now, with Mayweather's timing and his speed and accuracy, that's how he knocks people out. Mm -hmm. um, now, you also worked for a, another great uh, fighter, Kostya Zhu. I didn't work for him. Uh, we were in the same camp. We were in the same camp. You are in the same um, camp. Um, it was another great experience working with, with Kostya Zhu. You know, um, and I always tell people, as far as I'm concerned, um, Costa Zhu is probably the best fighter that ever came out of Russia, and he's probably the best fighter that I've ever fought out of Australia. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best. You yeah. know, the guy is. Uh, he was a natural talent, uh, and uh, he was, and he carried a lot of power. Um, you know, and, and I remember early in his um, in his career, Costa Zhu had the best defense. You know, he could just stand in front of you and make you miss. Mm. Um, you know, he just had these little moves that he used to make and just make you miss. Mm. Um, but things change with age, you know. He, he mm. kind of slowed down a bit, you know, as time progressed. But I remember, you know, early in his days, he was, 
He was devastating. How long were you in the same stable with uh, Costa? Probably for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I first met Costa Zui, um, it was 1995 when I fought on, the, on his undercard, when he fought um, on the undercard of uh, Zhu and Roger Mayweather. Uh, and then I went back to South Africa, and then the following year I came back, and that's when I started working with Zhu. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in the same camp as Zhu. Mm. So, uh, Zhu uh, is regarded as one of the greatest uh, light welterweight champions of all time. Uh, and you have fought some great fighters, uh, Ludmore. Uh, Miguel Cotto. Uh, Miguel Cotto, wonder how he would size up against someone like Costa Zhu. Look, be uh, a great fight. Look, it would be a great fight. You know, like I'm one of the probably few people who don't like comparing um, you know, old fighters to current fighters. Uh, I just think um, you know, it, it, there's, there's an element of disrespect. Uh, you know, if you start comparing fighters uh, in fights that will never happen, it, it doesn't matter how you go about it, uh, it's always going to trigger that element of disrespect. Um, so I don't think it's fair to be comparing uh, uh, an ex-fighter to a current fighter. You know, people always ask me, what do you think, uh, you know, how do you think Mayweather will go on his, uh, against um, Sugar Ray Robinson? Sugar Ray Robinson was the best in his era. Mayweather is the best in his era. Why compare fighters that will never fight? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm, it's I a bit just, difficult to make the comparison. It's not difficult. I just think out of respect of fighters, I don't want to do okay, it. Okay, I understand. Like I said, you know, it will always trigger some, you know, an element of disrespect. Um, but having said that, you know, um, Miguel Cotto is he's a great fighter, and uh, Costa Zua, I've already said that before. You know, he's the best uh, that ever came out of Russia. He's the best that ever fought out of, out of Australia. So definitely they would have made a great fight if they ever fought. But I won't pick a winner. Power-wise, how, how would you compare Zoo's power to Miguel Cotto's? They both are, they both are devastating punches. Um, but, um, you know, I would have to uh, lean a bit towards Costa Zoo uh, mm -hmm. as far as punching power is, you know, is concerned. You know, why I say that uh, is, you know, um, if you could feel a guy's punching power in sparring, whereas, you know, when he's using bigger gloves, that means that guy's a national puncher. And mm -hmm. that's how, you know, I could feel his power mm -hmm. when I was sparring with him. The guy can just... And you boxed exhibitions with Zoo too, didn't you? I've done exhibitions and I've done... Were they with smaller gloves? No, no, no. They were just bigger Big gloves, gloves, normal yeah. sparring gloves. And you still felt the power? He, he, he could punch. He's a great puncher. He's a great puncher. Okay, let's um, let's match Zoo up with um, you. Don't have to give a winner uh, with Saul Alvarez. How do you match him up, boxing wise and ability, boxing ability and power wise? Look, again, I don't want to pick a winner, but no, no, you don't know, have to pick I, a winner. I say, you know, Zoo was a great fighter. Alvarez is proving everybody wrong every day. He's proving that he's one of the best. Uh, again, it will be a great fight. Um, look, the thing with boxing is um, sometimes it's all about timing. Mm. You know, uh, if you fight someone at the right time, and you can, you know, at the right time, you can beat them. And sometimes you can have a, you can have a bad day in the office. So it's it's not easy to pick, you know, um, who's gonna win, you know, mm. until people really get into the ring and fight. Uh, but having said that, you know, we're talking about two great fighters here who would. Uh, you know, it would have been a very interesting fight. Mm. Um, now that we spoke about Miguel Cotto and Saul Alvarez, what did you think about their, their bout? It was a great fight. It was a great fight. Um, look, um, I also think that fight could have gone either way. Uh, yeah, close. You know, you know, it was a close fight. Uh, I don't agree with some, you know, with the way some of the judges, you know, scored, scored it. it. Yeah. I think it was a very, very close fight. Mm. Uh, and, and Miguel... Sh you know, I think uh, Miguel Cotto showed, um, you know, he scored with harder punches, you know. Yeah, his he had punches, control early in the fight. His punches were more effective. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, um, when you're fighting a young fighter, mm. you know, there's always that, um, you know, the, you, know, you want to keep the young fighter, you know, in yeah. the market, you know, and, and I mm. think that's just how it worked out, you know. Mm. Um, we can get more from Alvarez, um, whereas I don't think we can get more from uh, Cotto in the future. So yeah, if, you know, yeah. Sol Alvarez is still improving. He's still improving. Cotto's 
probably not gonna he's not gonna get any better than what he is. Oh, he, he's leveled out. He's leveled out, but he's still a great fighter. You can't take that. Oh out no, no, him. that's that's true. There's no doubt about that. And now Sol Alvarez, now WBC champ, and he will uh, get the fight uh, Triple G in 2016. How do you see that fight? Very interesting fight. Fight. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know, um, like I said in my interviews in the past, um, Triple G hasn't been tested yet. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, he's beat. You know, he's beaten. He's beat a few world champions. You know, including um, our own Daniel Gill. But uh, you know. I still think he still needs to be tested against a, a legit great fighter, mm. and I think um, Sol Alvarez will be a big test for him. Mm -hmm. um, Is he the best middleweight to challenge uh, Triple G at the moment? Well, I think at the moment the yeah. best fight for him out there is, is, is Alvarez. Um, mm. Had Coro won, it would have been Coro. Mm. So I think yeah, this fight, uh, you know, will, will tell us more about him. Yeah. And he's still an improving fighter, so well, whereas... Yeah, both of them are, you know, triple yeah, yeah, that's right, he's, yeah. he's, he's improving, that's right. Well, thanks very much for your time. Like, what was there anything you'd like to say to Fight Look, News readers? I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, it's been a great year for me, and I'm sure it's been a great year for, you know, everyone else out there. Mm. Uh, and if it's not been a great year, you know, hopefully next year, you know... It's going to pick up. Turns out to be a good year for you, so mm. Merry Christmas, everybody. Good on you, Thank you.